haven't been doing it that great on our reading this month. We've each read about three books <laughs> and next week is the end of August. So we thought today would be the perfect day to do the 24 hour reading challenge. It's been a while since we did one of these. I've been dreading it, but it needs to be done. And afterwards, I think we're gonna feel a lot better because we'll get some reading done. We aren't going to stop the timer. We're just gonna set one. It's currently like 11 a.m. So we will just stop tomorrow at 11 a.m. and see how much we can read during that time. I'm not necessarily ready, but it needs to be done. I'm currently reading If He Had Been With Me. I'm about 100 pages in and it's going very well. So I think I want to continue reading it today. I am just breezing through it. So I think this will be a good one for me to start with in this 24 hours. I brought a couple different books, but I, I think I really want to start this book because I just read my first H.D. Carlton book, Does It Hurt? I didn't love it, but I do own Haunting Adeline book one in the Cat and Mouse duet. And I feel like since I just ended with her writing, and I didn't like it, this is gonna be the redemption. I'm hoping I love this one, I've heard great things. It's supposed to be a super dark romance, so I don't really know what I'm getting myself into. I think it's like a stalker romance, but I think this will be a good start because if I get hooked like I normally do in dark romances, even though it's thick, like I think I'll breeze through it. So today's the perfect day to start it. So those are our books. It is currently 11.07 a.m. So we got a lot of writing to do. So let's get started. reading for a little bit and my book is going so good. I obviously knew going into this one that it was going to be a really sad book but something I can say the prologue I was not expecting for it to just tell us like what's going to happen. I didn't love that but the characters in this are so good like I truly care about everybody in this book. Our main characters Finn and Autumn are so cute. Not to bring up the summer I turned pretty but they literally give me just like Belly and Conrad vibes like they just have to be together. They've grown up together. They've been friends forever. Their moms are best friends. They've been in each other's lives since they were babies. They've definitely had feelings for each other since they were little, but they just don't want to admit it. And something happens like at the end of eighth grade, they kind of had like a little falling out. So they went into high school not communicating. And in this book, we're following their journey through high school. And so now Finn is like the really popular hot guy and Autumn is just to herself in her little group and she has her own boyfriend. But we see little moments of them communicating because they do live right next to each other and the mothers always wanna have dinner together. So it's like they are family and they have to talk anyways. But I'm just screaming at them to be together because they're so cute. I know I really like a book when I'm completely locked in and I just feel like I'm there. And that's definitely how I feel right now. I feel like I'm in both of their friend groups and I just wanna know more. I wanna know how it's gonna end and I just want them to be together. I'm glad you're liking it. This book is already starting off just wild. I knew it was a stalker romance. I don't know why I didn't prepare myself more for it, but it's super interesting. We're following Addie. She just inherited like this huge mansion from her grandmother that just passed. She's living there alone. It's kind of like a creepy gothic place. And she starts receiving like roses randomly. They'll be left in her home, even though the doors are all locked, they'll be left in the car waiting for her. Like just little creepy things are happening. And she's realizing she has a stalker, like a full man watching her throughout this house. What I did find interesting though is she ends up finding her great grandmother's old diaries. And in these diaries, her great grandma would like write about her experiences with her own stalker. Like her great grandma had someone who would like watch her. It's crazy to see like history repeating itself. And it adds like a spooky eerie layer because her great grandma met an untimely death. So it's like, is that <laughs> is that what's gonna happen to you? Like, I just thought that was cool, something I wasn't expecting because it's kind of like a mystery aspect. I don't know how I feel about the guy yet though. We do get his perspective, which I was not expecting, but I, like, I see what they're trying to do. I just don't know if I love it yet. I don't know if I like him for her because he's, like, that's weird energy. Why not just not nah, talk to her? I don't know. It's the dark romance. It's the dark romance, <laughs> yeah. I will say though, I'm liking it more than does it hurt already though. 
so that's good. I don't know what to expect though, because there's already like darker topics that I know we're probably going to explore more. I don't know if I'm ready. So our books are going good so far, but we do want to change our scenery and we haven't eaten lunch yet. So we want to go to Starbucks since their fall menu just dropped. I can't believe it's out already. I know. Everything looks good. It's just fall already. We're here, but it's like 110 degrees <laughs> outside. Exactly. But that's fine. We're going to go grab our little pumpkin drink and pretend like it's fall time and continue reading our books there. back from Starbucks. The fall drinks? What did you get? I got a pumpkin chai latte iced with oat milk. That's that was crazy. so good. Was it? It was so good. It got me so excited for the fall. I don't normally drink Starbucks, but when I do, I normally get a matcha. So it was nice to change it They're up a little bit. pricey. Yeah. How was that 20 bucks what we got? <laughs> That's a whole paperback. <laughs> I know. I got a pumpkin frap because I don't drink caffeine and it was good. They have two like caffeine free fall drinks. So definitely get on that if you want something like that. But it was good. The cheese danish was good. The cheese danish, they were out of the pumpkin cream cheese muffin. How? Because the fall menu just came out and they were completely sold out. all the girlies go early in the morning. I checked in the morning to see if they were still stocked. They weren't. At 10 a.m. they were out of stock. Yeah, we would have never made it then. Yeah, so. <laughs> but yeah, we read a bunch there. I'm almost done with mine, which is crazy. I'm not even halfway yet, but the text is so tiny. I didn't think it was gonna take me this long. I'm not even halfway, but it's fine. So in mine, we're really just diving into their own relationships. Like Finn is in a relationship and Autumn is in a relationship, but it's like, they know that they love each other. And it's so hard, just like Belly and Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna compare them all time. That's what I compared it to the whole time. Oh, okay. I was just thinking Autumn is dating this boy named Jamie right now and he's giving very much Jeremiah. Like, is it cute? Yes. But is that your soulmate? No. Is it the one? No. And we know it, everyone knows it. <laughs> but are they cute together? Yes. yes. So, you know, have your fun. This is more okay because they're not brothers. Right, right. So it's fine. Basically, Autumn and Jamie are having their own little problems in their relationship because obviously Autumn has feelings for Finn and Jamie knows something weird is happening there. And Finn is in his own relationship with Sylvie and he knows deep down too, like that's not his person. There's still love there, but just not the same kind of love. So at least now in the book, I mean, we're a good chunk of the way in. They're just realizing they want to be together, but we have to make it right. And it just makes me so sad because I just think of all the wasted time. Like they could have just already been together by now. That's what she's saying in her point of view. like. There's been so much time wasted already. Imagine if we didn't fall off in eighth grade and we went into high school together, like how different our lives could be right now. It's so sad. It is you. so sad because it's so true. It's true. Like that happens in real life and it's just devastating to read about. It is because all that needed to happen was a simple conversation. And normally y'all know I don't like miscommunication, but this does feel different because it's very realistic. Mm -hmm. A lot happens in life that just goes unsaid. <laughs> don't start crying. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't have that much left to go. And knowing what I know from the prologue, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I'm scared to continue, but it needs to be done. I love these characters. I need to see how their story ends. I'm ready, I think. Mine, here's the thing you guys. I've said before too, when I read dark romances, I do try to push things aside of my head. I have a different set of standards I set, but I don't know why this is the exception. I, I feel like I'm 
picking at this one more than I normally do with dark romances. I don't know if it's because I just read an H.D. Carlton book and I already didn't like that one. So this was already like her second shot for me. But I feel like I'm kind of looking into it a little too hard because it doesn't make sense, okay? There's so many different things happening. I feel like they're trying to do too much. And then they're trying to make this stalker guy like a good, a good guy, but not good guy. Because even though he murders people, it's like the bad people, right? Which, okay, I get. But then also he has like this underground empire that he runs and his like life's mission is to save like women and children from being like kidnapped and tortured and like trafficked. But then how are you stalking some girl <laughs> on the side? Like, you know what I mean? Make it make sense. Like pick a side. I think they're just trying to make the readers fall for him. I see what they're trying to do. I just don't know if I feel that way because like he just goes about this all wrong. Like, do you have to stalk her? He like saw her one day randomly at like a bookstore and immediately was like, she's she's the one. She's the one and I'm gonna make it happen. So very much Joe. So much like that show. From you. From you. Just very much saw her and that's now his obsession. Have to have her. Have to have her, even if she doesn't want it. Like that's, see, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that I fall for him later on, if that's possible. He's just, he's kind of crazy, kind of psycho. I don't know about it, you guys, I don't know yet. Since I'm almost done with mine, we're just gonna keep on reading and then we'll come back and update you when I'm finished and then we'll see where you're at in your book. So we read for a lot longer and I finally finished my book. Barnes and Noble was right because when you go and you see this book there, it says modern tragedy. <laughs> it sure does. And that is correct. It was so sad. I just don't think life is fair. I seriously think I would have given this five stars if it wasn't for the prologue because all that's going through my mind is that I saw this coming. I knew exactly what was gonna happen because you told me exactly what was gonna happen in the first page. And it was just so sad because it's just, it's true. If he had been with you, everything would have been different. I know, I can't think about it too hard because I'll cry. Everything could be different if this one thing didn't happen. And that's what made me really like this story because it was so realistic. I am gonna give it a 4.5. If you haven't read it yet, which I'm sure you probably have because everyone's already read it, I would recommend not reading the prologue and just going into it, not knowing much about it. It would have been a five if I didn't read the prologue. So there you go. So while Lauren finishes that one, I'm going to start The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This was actually the book that I picked in my monthly TBR pick. So I've got to read it. I did want to read it in fall time just because Dark Academia gives me fall vibes. I don't know why. It just does. Yeah. But that's okay because we're basically pretending it's fall already anyways. I think this will be my first Dark Academia, so I'm really hoping I'm gonna love it. I know it's very loved, so I'm hoping I'm gonna love it too. I have finally hit more than halfway. I probably only have like a third left, so we're slowly making our way through it. Here's the thing though, I felt like I was unsure about it in the last update, and I don't know how, but I'm back on my BS now because they, they got me. They've hooked me. I somehow now I'm rooting for them and I love this man. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. It's so much more exciting this way. <laughs> he just, he's different. Also, so spicy. I, I mean, I guess I could have been expecting that, but I just wasn't super spicy. I could see why people may not like this man. I was uneasy about him at first, but the more you get to know them together, the more you understand they're both kind of psycho and have twisted minds, they work. Somehow it fits, they work. So now I'm obsessed. I can't wait to see what happens. Super, super dark topic. So I mean, I know I keep saying that because because it needs to be said. I mean, if there's a book that you need to read trigger warnings for, this is, this is it. But I am glad that I'm enjoying it now. I can't wait to see how it ends. I've heard it ends on a cliffhanger. So I'm like waiting to see if it's gonna be like one of those where I have to pick up the next book immediately or not, but it's going good. Hopefully I can finish by the next time that we update and we'll see how far you get into yours, but I need to like start my next one already. It is 5.30, so we're gonna keep on reading, we're gonna eat some dinner, and hopefully you love the end of your book and hopefully I love the start of mine.
guys, I just finished haunting Adelaide. I know that they said it ends on a cliffhanger, but this cliffhanger was ridiculous. Like, I can't actually believe they ended the book like this. I love how I had a complete 180 from starting it to now because I know I said it felt like they were doing too much in the beginning. Now, I think it almost helped it because the pacing never slowed down. Something was always happening. Not only are we following Addie in present day with like dealing with her stalker and everything she's going through, but also her reading her great grandmother's letters from the past about her stalker and then they're trying to like solve that murder. And then we have Zaid who's like on this mission to take down this group of government people who are like doing human sacrifices. Like it's a lot. There's a lot happening, but it works for this book. I really ended up enjoying it. I was kind of hoping that I could get away with just reading this book because I've heard book two is like significantly more dark and disturbing. And with how this one ended, I really don't think I could read book two because knowing how that's gonna start and like where the cliffhanger left off like I don't think I could personally read about what's gonna happen next so if you have read the duet and you think I could somehow like skip over all of the like really awful things that one of the characters has to endure in book two please let me know if you think that's possible because I do want to know what happens but I just my triggers are gonna be in book two and I cannot read about that so let me know I mean this one was so good though I don't know how many stars I'm gonna give it but it feels like a four I think there was just so much going on and I enjoyed it it's gotta be a four at least I was gonna read a different book on my TBR for the month next. However, I remembered that H.G. Carlton actually has a short book about one of the characters we just met in this book. And I think I was supposed to read it first. I completely forgot though, so it's fine. I'm gonna read it now. It's called Satan's Affair. It's a full length dark standalone. We see a scene in this book where the characters go to like this haunted fair, like a haunted house type thing. And we meet like a really interesting character and Satan's Affair is gonna be all about her and her story. So I am excited to learn more about her she's kind of crazy so I'm interested to read like in her point of view I'm gonna go ahead and start that now I don't think it will take me that long because it's more like of a novella but I'm gonna start this while you're still reading at the six so in this book we have the Alexandrian society and basically it's like where they invite the six most magical people to come only five of them are going to be here at the end so we've met all of these six people they all have a different special power right now I can already say that Libby and Nico are my favorites. They actually already knew each other and they're the only ones who have a history together and know each other very well. Every time I'm in somebody else's point of view, I just don't care. I don't know what it is, but then I get back in their point of view and I'm like, okay, I like them. And they have this fun little cute banter where they're not supposed to like each other, but they do. I'm a good way in right now and I just feel like more should be happening. It feels more character driven so far. Like they're all in the Alexandrian society and nothing is really happening. They're just trying to figure out each other's powers and what they are each capable of doing. But there's no like classes. Like I thought there would be, I thought there would be more world building, but it's really just here are these kids, here are them connecting, and here's their magical powers, along with them being really horny as well. Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting that. Right now, I'm just living for the Libby and Nico moments. Okay. I thought it'd be more like about challenges and stuff. It's not? No. I'm kind of glad that you guys didn't pick that one for me then. <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead and keep reading, and then we will update you guys in a little bit. later i think it's like 10 p.m already so we've been reading all day i've got a good chunk into this and it's freaking insane i mean i thought i was already in a dark enough headspace because i just read haunting adeline and i thought i'd be good but jumping into this like i i 
Is the author good? How does she even come up with this stuff? It's wild, it's brutal. So we met this character in Haunting Adeline, like I said before, her name is Sibby. Basically, she travels with Satan's Affair, which is, like I said, like this big haunted house, traveling tour, circus type of thing. And she has been with them for like five years. The thing is, no one knows she's there, right? She just kind of left her family. She grew up in like a cult. It was a devastating childhood. I think her dad had like 18 kids with children like it was a lot so she escaped from that joined this circus her dad always claimed that he was like a messenger of god and like you know how cult people just say that stuff Sibby thinks she can smell evil on people so she takes it upon herself to rid the world of these evil people so that's like something crazy already in itself but she also has like these five henchmen that help her out they kind of just wait around the grounds and like when she can smell evil people she'll kind of lure them into to her haunted house and then murder them it's it's a lot <laughs> but like they're so graphic with the details of the murder it's not like a dexter moment where it's like he's gonna make sure it's it's a nice clean plastic on the ground one fatal stab and that's it she's gonna have her fun with it and she has a little too much fun she likes killing a little too much she's wild very interesting to read about though i do wish i would have read this first though because i think i know things i'm not supposed to know so i would have liked to read this before haunting headline that's my fault i completely forgot about it but it's an interesting fun read and I'm waiting for it to like match up to when we see her in the book. Well it sounds like you're enjoying yours. Mine, I don't know what the deal is. I wish I could give you an update. I wish I could tell you what is going on. I have no idea what's going on honestly and I don't know if it's because the story is just that way or if I'm just getting tired of reading. Mm. I'm not sure which one it is. I'm hoping it's just that I'm getting a little bit tired of reading today but I don't think that's what the problem is if I'm being honest. I think in the last update I said that it's really like no plot. Yes there's a basic storyline of the six magic people in this Alexandrian society but nothing is really happening with that. We're still just trying to figure out everyone's magical powers still? and yeah and everyone's just like trying to be with everyone. It's just a mess. I still don't care about anybody but Libby and Nico and I think it's insane. Everybody is really horrible too. I like characters that I can love and it's like everybody is just a horrible person. Oh. I will say though, I love seeing these little pictures of them. But oh, look how cute these drawings are. Like that is so cute. They look gorgeous. They do. I can imagine them looking that good. I'm sure they're all really hot and powerful and beautiful. I just, I don't know what it is. There's no connection with me in this story yet. I'm hoping the last chunk I have left is going to be revolutionary and different and something crazy is gonna happen but I'm a little scared that nothing is gonna happen for me to feel that way. Oh no, I wanted to read that one too. Maybe it's just me because I know this one is really loved so I don't know what it is. I'm hoping it's just because I'm tired but I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I'm enjoying my book and I'm tired. Well, that's good. Yeah, see? <laughs> I should be able to enjoy a book no matter what time yeah. it is. And y'all know I read late. I'm trying to give it excuses but I don't know. We're both pretty tired so I think we're just gonna call it right now. We're gonna go to bed we'll pick it up tomorrow morning when we get up whenever that will be <laughs> and i'm hoping to finish satan's affair tomorrow morning so i can move on to another book but i guess we'll see it's been a good day though we each read one book you one and a half now basically so it's going good it is like draining though yeah. like i feel tired and we haven't even really done it definitely we will see you guys in the morning <laughs> guys we did it it is 11 30 a.m the next day and we're done we went to sleep early last night because we were so tired and we actually woke up early this morning so we got a lot read probably the earliest i've gotten up in a while <laughs> i ended up finishing satan's affair this was a wild ride super short read though it was spicy it was spooky it was dark but it was entertaining i do recommend it but definitely read it before haunting adeline if you decide to read the whole series i think the plot twist would have been way better 
better if I would have read it beforehand, but I did like it. And then I ended up starting The Book Eaters this morning. I was excited for this one. I don't know if I'm loving the writing yet. We are following Devin in two different points of time in her life. We're following her now. I believe she's like 29 years old and she lives with her son. She is a book eater and her son is a mind eater. And then we also have like her past while she's growing up. She was like eight years old and we're seeing like how she grew up and things like that. It's super interesting. I'm thinking the main plot of this entire book is going to be her trying to locate the cure or the drug that lets her son feed off of books like book eaters even though he's a mind eater because she's having to like find people for him to like eat because mind eaters like eat human brains and stuff it's a whole thing so I know she's trying to track down this drug to try to make it easier on him and so they can stop you know messing with humans and stuff so it's okay I'm not loving it yet but I hope that I will I'm not too far into it though I'm on like 30 pages in so I'm sure it'll get better I did end up finishing the atlas six things really didn't get better the last 20 pages were good and caught my attention and could have formed a connection but at that point it's too late for me definitely not my favorite i'm seriously thinking like 2.5 stars not even joking i think i would have dnf'd this if it hadn't been for this vlog that's pretty bad it is bad i hate feeling that way about a book too but i just was not connecting with it i wasn't feeling it i wonder if it's her writing because i tried to read alone with you in the ether and i i dnf i could not get through it maybe it's just going over our heads i don't know <laughs> i don't know if it's just me i don't know if anyone else felt that way let me know if you loved it let me know i know there is more in the series and i do not plan on continuing it i'm done i'm good thank you super cute cover though <laughs> I do know with if he had been with me, the boys' point of view is coming out soon, and I will be picking that up. So I had a really good book and then a really not so great book. Good news is though, we've got some books under our belt for this month. It's been scary out here how slow I've been reading. I've got a bunch left that you guys picked out for me on Instagram for this month. So I'm gonna try to get through as many as I can, but time's ticking. We only have next week left. We are gonna have our reading sprint this Sunday though. Tomorrow. tomorrow. We're gonna have our reading sprint tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So definitely come out. I don't know what I'm gonna read yet for that. Maybe I'll finish Book Eaters. Maybe I'll start something else because I don't know if I'm loving it. We will be live here on YouTube. So come bring your books and come chat with us. Also, if you are not already a part of our Literal Besties book club, we are about to pick our next book for September. We'll be having a poll on the Fable app. The link for that will be in the description down below. We're gonna include all of the suggestions that you guys had from last month's poll. So we will have that. Once we pick a genre, we'll have another poll for the book. So yeah, we're gonna be doing that soon. Reading sprint tomorrow. Lots of stuff happening. It's the end of the month. I think this has been really successful. We need to start doing reading vlogs at least once a month again because they just help out so much and we go book shopping way too often wrap up and tbr coming out next week which is crazy that's pretty much gonna be it for today's video but make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you next time you know what i mean make it make sense like pick a side <laughs> pick a struggle oh! <laughs> i'm so I'm terrified pick a struggle oh like, never mind never mind he's both <laughs> he's trying to hurt you hello hi <laughs> Is this lighting crazy? Yeah, I mean, yeah.